Hey guys, Farmer Jesse here. Today I'm gonna do something a little different since, you know, drinking alcohol is kind of an essential part of being a farmer. No, that's a fact. You can look it up. I thought I would do a little video on how to make wine out of basically whatever you have in your house. You have some fruit and you have some basic equipment. You don't even need to buy it. You have it already. You can make some wine. So, let's do it. So the first thing you're gonna need is some sort of containment vessel. So you're gonna need either a clay crock or a glass jar or even a bowl. The only rules here are that you have to be able to cover it with cloth and a string to keep bugs out. You'll also need something that is non-reactive. So it can't, so stainless steel is okay, but most metals are out. And yeah, and you can even use plastic. And you're gonna take that vessel and you're gonna clean or sanitize it. Just some warm water, preferably some hot water and some soap uh, if you have a little isopropyl alcohol or something like that, wipe it down, let it dry out, and then you're ready to add your ingredients. Next is to get your fruit. I recommend using berries. I made this out of grapes because I found them for 87 cents at the store. I've made my best wines have been blackberries, blueberries, raspberries, black raspberries, berries. Berries are really, really good because they have a lot of the, the kind of, um, the citric acid is already there and you've already got a lot of the qualities that you expect to get out of a wine when you use berries. And I like using a mix of them so you get kind of a diversity of, of flavor. So you can use grapes, but you don't have to. You can use a lot. You can use whatever fruit you have around. I do recommend uh, sticking with berries at first or adding berries to any non-berry fruit that you use. Watermelons, for instance, you have to add some lemon juice and I would definitely recommend some berries. You know, strawberries may be the one exception here that uh, in terms of berries, if you're gonna use strawberries, you're probably gonna wanna use at least two tablespoons of, uh, of lemon juice to kind of counteract the, the malic acid, the sort of uh, the, the funk flavor of strawberries when they, when they ferment. Um, so that'll actually help balance out the wine a little bit. The next thing I do is I go ahead and crush those berries. Um, and you're just gonna try and break up every single berry that you can. You may not get them all, that's okay. Um, go ahead and break up all the berries that you can and then uh, you know try and squeeze all that juice out of them. And you can even leave some of those stems in there. The stems will add a little tannin. Uh, tannin is that sort of dry effect you get when you drink some wines. Don't be afraid of it though. Even if you like a sweet wine, a little bit of tannin will give it some backbone and some structure and it'll give it some longevity. So if you do wanna age this wine, which I'm not going to, but you can, um, that, that tannin will help will help kind of preserve the, the, the wine over a period of time. So it, it helps to kind of age it slowly. Like I said, you're doing this from what you have at home. So you don't probably have wine yeast at home. If you do, you can use them. If you don't, um, you know, you're gonna need some natural yeast. There are natural occurring yeast that live on berries. They're already there. They're already in the air. They're probably on your stuff. They're guaranteed on your stuff. After you've crushed those berries, I like to add a little bit of raw honey it just inoculates it with a little bit of the um, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, if I'm saying that at all correctly. Um, and that's the that's the wine yeast. That's the yeast that creates alcohol. And it also has, you know, you may also get some other bacteria, but that'll give it a little bit of complexity uh, in the fermentation process. And by bacteria, I mean good bacteria, like beneficial microbe. And you may get some bad ones, but those will die in the alcohol. That's Alcohol is a preservative, so it will kill bad stuff. So when I add honey, it's just it's just insurance that I will get some of those yeast. yeast. So next, uh, the the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna actually uh, take and stir it like crazy. You're gonna stir that thing. You know, I recommend doing this on the weekends because you're gonna need to stir it two, three four times a day, really, minimum four for me, at least for the first couple days, because you're trying to get enough oxygen in there to get the fermentation sort of rolling. Um, so some ferments will take one day, some ferments take four days. This one took about three days, and that's stirring four, maybe five times a day. So I'm stirring once when I get up in the morning, once like midday, once in the afternoon, and once right before I go to bed, just to keep those mold spores submerged. So yes, I stir and I stir and I stir, and then, just like magic, you'll come one day, you'll go to stir, and it will look different on the top, and you'll slowly drag your wooden spoon, and I recommend wooden spoons, again, no reactive metals. Um, you're gonna you know, push your wooden spoon through there, and it's just gonna start bubbling, and it's the most magical thing. That is fermentation. 
And what's happening, essentially, is that the, the, the wine yeast, the Saccharomyces cerevisiae, are eating the sugars and turning it into alcohol and carbon dioxide. The alcohol is kind of the byproduct, and so is the carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is what you get in champagne. That is that is the yeast releasing its carbon dioxide, and it, and it creates this kind of effervescence. But you let that bubble out, uh, for a few days and let that bubble out and you let it kind of slow down a little bit. If you put it immediately into a carboy, you can do that. And I'll describe what a carboy is in a second. It may overflow for one, those, all those bubbles will collect in there. It may push over top of your carboy. Um, but the other thing is uh, you want to just go ahead and get them out as fast as possible so that you can start the slow fermentation. So I like leaving it in the crock for a couple days and just continuing my stirring process to keep those mold sores submerged. And I'll even wipe the sides of the crock to keep uh, any sort of residue on the side from molding. So at this point, what you're going to do is you're going to find another container. So this one has to have kind of a smaller head like a, um, like a jug. That's what I used. I went ahead and used that because that's what you guys probably have is like a, maybe a plastic jug or a beer growler or uh, maybe you have a carboy already which is just like a, it looks like a jug with a little handle on it um, and you know we maybe you already have those I went ahead and used the jug because I couldn't find my carboys and I wanted to do this in a way that maybe you guys could do it at home so you can go ahead and strain it off if you want you can strain out those grape musts um, which is fine you can leave them in there that's fine that'll just make a deeper color uh, so you can you know start there and uh, strain out that that juice and then you're gonna pour it through some sort of sieve into your um, into your your container your sort of your sort of long fermentation container so you're gonna pour it into that container and then you're gonna need some sort of airlock now when I say airlock what I'm talking about is something that lets oxygen out lets carbon dioxide out but doesn't let oxygen in so um, so it's letting carbon dioxide out and it's letting not letting oxygen back in so it's building kind of an airtight seal inside so it's not oxygen is kind of the enemy of wine to an extent so it will it will slowly break down your wine if too much is allowed in there plus you want to keep the bugs out if the bugs if oxygen can't get in bugs can't get in so um, there are a few different ways. I used an airlock because I didn't have a balloon or I didn't have the cap to that jug. So if you have the cap to that jug, you can use that. The convenience of the airlock is that you never have to burp it. If you put a cap on it, it's either gonna blow the cap off when it gets too much pressure, or you're gonna have to burp it every day, which by that I just mean pull the cap off and let that carbon dioxide off and put it right back. Um, so otherwise you've heard of like wine bottles exploding. That's what happens is they start to re-ferment or start to re ferment to, you know, like uh, continue their fermentation and the wine bottles will actually explode um, or the jug will actually explode. So you don't want to keep it capped if you don't have to, but you can also put a balloon on there and then just when it gets full, you know, take your, take it off and let it, let that carbon dioxide go out and then put it back on. At first it's going to be really active and after maybe like a week or so, you don't have to burp it quite as often, but I would burp it every day, probably twice a day at first, and then, you know, from then on you can burp it a little bit less. So you can clarify this wine. I'm not going to. I don't like clear wines. It doesn't interest me. Uh, I kind of like a funky, little bubbly, you know, kind of cloudy wine. That's my preference. I worked in wine for a really long time, so those refined wines really bore me. I like the really rustic stuff, um, the natural wines and that sort of thing. So uh, you can do that, you can uh, clarify it, and that's not very hard. One, the wine will kind of clarify itself. Over time, all those wine, all the wine will sort of separate from the lees. The lees are the dead yeast and then the must, any sort of grape residue that's in there, it'll all sort of separate. So you'll get a little clear wine right on top and you can siphon that into another container. And when you do that, uh, just leave that little bit of lees at the bottom and then let that sit for a little bit longer and that'll give you a really nice, a slightly more clear wine. So you're going to want to keep this in kind of a dark, cool place, preferably 55 to 65 degrees. Uh, you know, basements work really well for this. Um, a closet as long as it's not by a water heater. A lot of people make that mistake of just a closet is a cool space. It's not. Um, you know, you can put it maybe under your counter if you get if it gets stays cool under there. Uh, somewhere that it stays relatively cool. The longer it stays in there, the more that little bit of oxygen at the top will sort of kind of dribble into your wine and it'll create this sort of nutty flavor. We call it oxidation. And I, I actually like oxidation a little bit. Uh, it makes a more complex wine and that's actually what an aged wine is. It's a really, 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 really slow oxidation that gives it all that complexity. So a little bit is not that bad. A little bit can actually be really good. Uh, I'm not going to get into bottling in this one. I'll get into that maybe in a later episode. Uh, so 
while you're here, go ahead and hit that little bobble wherever it pops up and um, subscribe. You can subscribe if you're on Facebook. Just hit that little thing and it'll take you to YouTube and have you subscribe. And that way you can get uh, follow-ups on this particular video and any video that we do uh, about farmsteading, about farming, about how to cook certain vegetables. Um, let's taste this wine real quick. So there it is. You can see it. It's a little bit on the cloudy side and it's actually got a grape floating in it that was at the bottom of the carboy. I poured this off. So. We'll just taste this real quick and see. Hmm. It's kind of earthy, a little citrusy. Yeah, that's good. Kind of funky, I love it. It's got a nice tannin to it. That actually would age well, so I'm gonna do a video on bottling this because I'm gonna keep a bottle. A uh, little tannin. Yeah, definitely a little citrusy on the palate. Mmm, that's nice, bright, fresh. This would be great for kind of a brunch situation. I'm into it. So, anyway, if you like this video, please like this video. Make sure to subscribe. Like I said, hit that little bobble. Um, other than that, leave a comment. Leave, uh, you know, share it with your friends. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Is it too early to finish it all? Because I finished it all.